282 million people in Africa suffer from chronic hunger. This corresponds to 20% of the continent's population. Prolonged drought in the region had led to severe food insecurities. More than a million people in Madagascar are facing famine. The people out there who need food and water now, tomorrow is too late. Africa's current population is estimated at 1.4 billion and is expected to hit 2.5 billion in the year 2050. The fundamental question is, how can the continent cater to the increased food demands? China has a solution. With only 7% of the world's arable land, China has managed to attain food security and feed about one-fifth of the world's population. Africa, meanwhile, holds 60% of the world's arable land, but remains the most food-insecure region. A number of African countries have already started tapping into China's vast wealth of technological innovations towards food security. In Madagascar, these vast rice fields are associated with local farmers harvesting rice. The crops are a hybrid rice from China, thanks to the father of hybrid rice, Yuan Longping. Yuan Longping was a Chinese plant scientist whose breakthroughs in developing high-yield hybrid strains of rice helped to alleviate famine and poverty across much of Asia and Africa. Hybrid rice varieties typically produce double or triple more rice per acre than non-hybrid strains when cultivated with the same transplant techniques, fertilizer and water. But as Mr. Yuan and his ever-growing teams of rice experts introduced hybrid strains across Asia and Africa, they also taught farmers a wide range of advanced rice-growing techniques that produced further gains. The production of local rice is about 2.5 tons per hectare and the average production on the 20,000 hectares that we planted is 7 tons. So the production not only doubled, but even tripled. In the beginning, local farmers couldn't believe or understand that our hybrid rice can be as productive as we said. Some even called our hybrid rice monster rice. Before they were introduced in Madagascar, the country, with 80% of its population living on agriculture and two-thirds of its arable land growing rice, was seeking a solution to the low yield of local rice. Madagascar today has Africa's largest area of hybrid rice cultivation with the highest yield. It is also the first African country that has set up a full industrial chain for hybrid rice production, improving the livelihoods of many Madagascan people. One of the farmers that we work with made some income by selling extra rice and building new homes and accommodating them with appliances. Fifteen other African countries have also introduced hybrid rice. Hybrid rice is a priority for most African countries, and this is the reason why there has been a wide, for example, in East Africa, there has been the East Africa Productivity Program that has sought to encourage smallholder farmers to adopt high-yielding varieties, which are more uh, water efficient, which are more resource efficient. In Burundi, a Chinese-owned rice farm is training farmers on how to farm the hybrid crop to increase their household incomes. Statistical data reveals that hybrid rice presents a significant economic gain. With local rice, it takes 80 kg of seed on one hectare to produce 5 tons of rice, while this hybrid rice variety takes only 12 kilograms of seed on one hectare to produce an estimated 10 tons of rice. I urge the Chinese team to go beyond Burundi and into Africa because other countries need the knowledge too. In neighboring Rwanda, China is also helping them achieve food self-sufficiency through the use of Junkao technology. 
The technology has a multifaceted approach of cultivating mushrooms for food and medicinal purposes, while at the same time addressing soil erosion and maintaining the volume of arable land. In 2021, Rwanda produced 70 metric tons of mushrooms, an increase of 20% over the last two years. I increased my incomes with this program of mushroom farming comparing with my salary when I was employed. I used to earn less than $200 per month, but now I generate my daily incomes and I can see the benefit of being self-employed. Over the last two decades, meanwhile, Kenya has seen a sharp decline in crop production due to several factors, including drought. A partnership in agriculture between China and Kenya could be the game changer, thanks to the Confucius Institute in Kenya's Egerton University. This is a laboratory for crop molecular biology at Kenya's Egerton University, the most advanced lab of its kind in East Africa. The lab gives real-time gene analysis when exposed to different conditions. This laboratory has helped me because of the equipment that it has. Also the artificial intelligent climate box gives good temperature, good humidity for these plants. According to official data, agriculture is one of the key sectors of Kenya's economy, accounting for over 30% of the country's GDP. But many farmers work without proper knowledge or updated technology, so there's huge demand for agricultural professionals. The Confucius Institute has given us technology. We've received Chinese professors. They have come to train us, and they have also come to train farmers at other times. In light of the above, experts reveal that African countries can solve their current food security issues and low income levels through experienced agricultural ability, technology transfers, and skills dissemination. This coincides with the new strategy of the Chinese government in the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, FOCAC. Cooperation in the agriculture sector has not only achieved early harvests, but brought tangible benefits to Africa. The looming food crisis in some parts of Africa tells us such forms of cross-continent cooperation has to be deepened. China is definitely one of the best candidates for Africa to stretch its cooperation muscles and to work together for the common good in revamping the agricultural sector.